Hey guys, welcome back to Make Epic Things. I'm Sean, in this video we're gonna be taking this plain old coffee table that came with our new cottage and turning it into something a little bit more special that matches the lake theme of this cottage. So I'm not exactly sure what wood species this is. It definitely looks like walnut, but what we're gonna be doing is taking off this fake live edge. I've got a dog, a small Boston Terrier, and we have a dog cage in the corner of the room. And this is going to act as a, a side table, a, si a dog cage side table. So instead of having the dog cage there, we're gonna be putting this top on it. However, because we are on the lakefront, on a lake called Lake Bellwood, out in beautiful Fergus, Ontario, we're going to be engraving the actual lake onto this. So to do that, we're gonna to have to get a vector of the lake. And obviously it is a smaller, more of an obscure lake. It's not something you can just find on Etsy, but I'm going to show you how to use Google Maps uh, as well as an image to vector or uh, image to SVG creator to actually generate SVG files for any lake or any body of water using strictly Google Maps data. Um, the dog cage right now is 24 by 17. So we're gonna end up with a 26 by 19 inch piece, basically giving us an inch around the perimeter of overhang. And again, we're gonna use a CNC machine, take that vector that we're gonna pull off Google Maps, uh, put the vector inside the table, sand it down, refinish it, and we're gonna square it off so we can get rid of these fake live edges. And then we can put it on our new dog cage. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is generate a vector SVG image of our lake. To do that, we're gonna use a service called My Maps from Google. And it is a version of Google Maps that you can actually generate your own custom maps. So just search My Maps on Google. Um, you'll need to be logged into a Google account. Click Create New Map, and then find your location. I'm gonna enter Bellwood, Ontario, or Bellwood Lake. And there we go, there's the lake. So. Obviously you could just screen capture this, but I think the easier way to do it is to kind of zoom in and then go print map. Again, watching, hit those little uh, three buttons or three uh, ticks to get your options and then go to print map, choose your paper size. You could do PDF or an image. I'm just gonna do uh, an image, hit print. However, what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of all those lines and stuff. So, uh, and titles and whatnot. So we're gonna change the base map and change the layering here. So on this base map, I'm gonna click something a little simpler. That maybe that works really, really well. I'm gonna be able to take this blue image, uh, just dark blue rather, in Photoshop and just grab that part. So let me go ahead and print that map again. So now I've got a version of that map uh, shape. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. This is not really an art. It's kind of a trial and error thing to try and get the right perspective. That's too big. That works. All right, so we go ahead and save this image, downloads, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up Adobe Photoshop. Um, you can use another image editing program for this. I'm just using Photoshop because it allows me to select things based on color. So I'm going to go to downloads, map image. I'm gonna zoom in and we can either use our smart magic wand tool here all right, which again, if you use Photoshop, it's right over here on the left-hand side. Click on that color, or we can do uh, select color range and then choose the color range. And that's gonna highlight everything um, in that area, turning down fuzziness here. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this selection, Control C, or you can go edit copy to a new document, and then we'll paste it. So there is the shape of our lake. Well, it's still an image, right? Oops, I wanna distort it here. It's still an image. Um, what do we wanna do? Now, by the way, um, you can see that there's a lot of like funky points and stuff. What we can actually do over here is if you want to round off that stuff a bit, you can actually use the rounding tool. So you would go select, modify, smooth, create a radius and you kind of experiment with this and you can see automatically that we've kind of rounded off everything. Going back to that, 
I'm gonna put the rounded version there and that just looks a little bit cleaner. It's not so much sharp edges. It's gonna obviously, uh, once we use our CNC machine, um, we can um, you know work with this a little bit better. You've got some places where you've got some random colors. You can just take your brush. You can even do this in, in Microsoft Paint, but take your brush and fill in any of these funky issues here. Okay, so now that we have that, we can either leave it that color or we can just desaturate it, uh, basically turning it black and white. You could even just fill it in with black like this. But now that we've got a black and white image, we can take this and actually um, convert it to a vector. And this works the same way um, if you're using you know, images uh, from, from Google Images Search or Etsy or whatever. If you copy a JPEG image, that's like black and white or like kind of like a line drawing, you can convert it from a, to a vector. So for that, I'm gonna go back to my browser and use a service called Convertio. And then I'm gonna choose my file. Uh, where is it? Downloads, map. It's a JPEG file. I'm gonna convert it to vector SVG, click convert. And what that's gonna do is going to upload that file. It's gonna trace it out and um, and spit back an SVG file. Some, depending on the vector editor you're using, like you're, if you're using a laser cutter, uh, like Lightburn software, you can actually do this within Lightburn and trace an image. Uh, but I'm using VCar for our CNC and I don't think uh, VCar has this functionality. Finished, so I can go ahead and download that. And I can open the SVG file and there you go. This is a scalable vector graphic SVG. Uh, and if you're familiar with CNC machines and, and laser cutters, this is now a file that you can bring into your software and actually do something with. So yeah, that's how you take any sort of lake or body of water from Google Maps and get it to an SVG format. So here in VCar, which is that CNC software that I commonly use, and most people probably use, I'm gonna input this as a 35 inch wide, 24 inch um, high table, because that's what the table is right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a uh, cutout for the actual finished size of the table. And I think we ended up being uh, 26 by 19, which is gonna give us an inch all the way around. And we'll probably end up just doing a little bit of a chamfer on that as well, um, or a, a curved radius. So now we're just gonna go ahead and import our vector, which is the one we created earlier in this video using the Google Maps data and we're gonna bring that over to our tabletop and line it up in such a way that's going to make sense. Scale it down if you need to. And I'm gonna go grab a star and place it right here, and that's approximately where our cottage is. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the tooling uh, using a pocketing operation. And I've got a quarter inch bit on the machine right now, so we're gonna start with that lace and see if we can get most of it done with that. And we're going to go down a quarter of an inch because that table really isn't too thick to begin with. So we don't want to take too much off. Um, and we'll see what that looks like. So that quarter inch bit not going to work for this. I could switch to a 1 8 or 1 16th, but I honestly think the star is a little bit too tiny. So to keep things simple, I'm just going to go ahead and instead of making it a star, make it a circle. If, it, if we were doing a laser engraving, this star would be no problem. But with the CNC uh, and backfilling it with resin, I do want to make sure that we um, we have, uh, we, we're doing this efficiently. So I'm going to go ahead and recalculate this toolpath, including this little circle over here, so that it all does it all in one pass. All right, so you've got that circle, you've got that uh, engraving there. Now with our final toolpath to actually cut out the table itself, we're going to set out a, we're going to set up a profile toolpath um, and we're going to go 0.875 inches because our table is actually 7 eighths of an inch thick. I'm going to go ahead and make sure we have tabs around this um, to keep that piece in place once we've actually routed it out. I'm going to go ahead and calculate this and we will generate a preview of what this thing looks like. And that works really, really well. Obviously at the end here, um, we're losing a little bit of the lake due to the, uh, the bit that we're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna change the size a little bit just so we make sure we get full coverage of this, uh, of the lake here. All right, now that I've 
messed around with that vector and got it to where uh, that quarter inch bit will cut through everything. I'm going to go ahead and export this to uh, the CNC machine file and then we can start cutting with our quarter inch bit. So by this point in the video, you should be actually thinking, well, how do I monetize this? And that's a good question because I'll tell you one thing that's a secret, not so secret. People with second homes, cottages, beach houses generally have more money than the average Joe. And they spend on, I don't want to say kitschy stuff, but things like, you know, life is better at the cottage or live life by the beach or things like having the shape of their lake or body of water engraved on charcuterie boards, tables, wall art. So I want you to run with that. And I want to give you a little bit of a tip here because I talk a lot about online marketing and selling on Amazon, selling on Etsy and all that kind of stuff. But what about old school? What about door knocking? These lakefront communities, these cottage destinations, these you know beach destinations, they all have like small shops, um, gourmet eateries, butcher shops, maybe even small grocery stores. You go in with a sample board, sample piece of art that's got a picture of the lake, maybe it's resin backfilled, whatever it may be, and you say, hey, is this something that your customers may be interested in? And this is, I'm telling you, these small mom and pop stores love stuff like this because they know that the people that come into those stores that are from those surrounding lakefront, beachfront, whatever communities do buy this type of stuff. So if you've got a place like this by you, you know, within an hour drive in any direction, Think about that, you know, is that something that you could possibly add to your product line and basically wholesale? Because these stores aren't gonna be buying one or two. You're gonna you know, be stocking five, 10, 20, whatever it is. Maybe they'll order more, maybe they'll order, you know, coasters, maybe they'll order uh, wall art, charcuterie boards, whatever. There's a lot of stuff that you can either engrave with a laser or engrave with a CNC and resin backfill uh, that really can have this lakefront uh, cottage type theme. Drive that point across, I've got a uh, laser project on the go here. Where I've got that same lake vector and I've added a kitschy phrase, life is better at the lake. It doesn't actually say the name of the lake, but it's kind of implied. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these boards in stock. And these are small little cheese boards that are like eight to $10 each wholesale. Uh, you know, obviously it's gonna take a few minutes to cut with a laser and then anything after that is pure money. So let's go take a look. So if I wasn't going to uh, backfill this with epoxy, I could have dialed down the laser settings. I had it up pretty high because I wanted to get a nice, thick, deep groove in there, which you can probably see on camera. I'm gonna backfill this with resin, but I'm gonna do it so carefully because I do not wanna have to play in this board. Uh, I'm not gonna fill the letters with resin. I'm really just gonna do the lake and then uh, basically fill it up to the point where you've got a meniscus not overflowing. My work table is currently occupied with a different project. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the CNC machine, which is hopefully a flat surface. And I'm gonna use that to pour the epoxy. I'm also gonna go and grab our other table. So you'll notice that I haven't sanded the top yet because in this case, I'm going to actually have the epoxy up a little bit higher than the level of the table. So we're gonna go plane the whole thing down before we actually finish it. So to get this guy prepared, this guy's already prepared because there's nowhere for the epoxy to go. It's gonna stay in that body of water. But this guy, obviously the epoxy can run right off there. So we're gonna take some painter's tape. You can also use uh, foil tape, whatever. It's not really that important. Um, as long as you're creating a sufficient dam for the epoxy uh, to stop. Because if you let the epoxy drip everywhere, it's gonna run off your project and be a complete waste and make a giant mess on the floor, which sucks even more. It's also a pleasant surprise to see that after when I was milling this, I could smell and see that that is actual true walnut. 
So it's not an import, it is actual walnut. So once I take this orangey finish off, I think it's gonna look really, really slick. So to fill both these projects up, I'm gonna be using Maker Poxy uh, by Total Boat and Jess Crow. It is a shallow pour art resin, so it's perfect for doing backfilling things like this. It's not a deep pour resin, so don't make a river table with that stuff. But for this application, it's great. I'm also gonna be using Black Diamond's Lux Deep Sea Blue. This is definitely not the sea, and I can tell you for a significant part of the year, the water's a little green where I am. But anyway, we're gonna use this kind of muted blue color. And uh, Black Diamond has a ton of different pigments. Um, and once I've already mixed this guy up and I've added the pigment, this epoxy is a one to one ratio. So that means for every milliliter or ounce of A, you use the same amount of B. When you're mixing epoxy, you wanna do it gently as possible. You do wanna get a thorough mix because if you don't mix A and B entirely, uh, it's not gonna set properly and your project basically ruined. However, um, if you mix too vigorously, you introduce a lot of air into the epoxy, which in itself becomes a problem because then you've got bubbly epoxy. When you're doing shallow pours or art type resin like this, it doesn't really matter because uh, the stuff's so shallow that the bubbles are gonna find themselves their way to the top anyway. And then you can pop them with the torch or a heat gun. But there's no point of introducing excess bubbles if you can avoid it. All right, it's just time to pour. Just not a race, do it gently. And it'll basically self-level and find all those little crevices. And remember with this table, because we are going to come and plane it after, it's okay to overfill the epoxy in this case. To do this board, I've transferred some of the epoxy to a small vessel with a pouring end, just to get a little bit more precision because I don't want to over pour this one if I can avoid it. And finally, for the tiny little point of interest marker, got a tiny bit of gold epoxy that I'm gonna fill this little hole with. It's really hard to measure this little epoxy, so I'm gonna have a lot of waste here, but it is what it is. So this epoxy sets in 12 to 24 hours. So basically at that point, it's not fully cured, but it's set enough that we could sand it or mill it or whatever we're gonna do with it. So, so we're back the next day with our resin lake project. That turned out pretty good. This is uh, ready for a quick sand, which we'll do now. And once we oil that board, it'll be done. This guy on the other hand, all, what we'll need to do is run it through our slab leveler or CNC machine, or if you've got a giant planer, a giant planer will also work. We're gonna now take off this upper level of resin and a little bit of the wood, which is gonna take off that stain as well and expose the raw walnut. And then we'll be able to finish this with Rubio Monocoat and mount it to our dog cage. So what I'm gonna do now is get this set up on the CNC machine, install our slab leveling bit, which will basically go over the entire surface and take probably like a 16th to an eighth inch off the entire surface. And then we can sand it up. So I pulled that leveled top off of our CNC machine. It's a little bit rough, mostly because of the way I mounted it, not actually mounting this to the machine, but pressing up pieces of wood, but it did the job. It's a very small project. I'm not overly concerned about a perfect finish, but either way, with this guy, we're gonna have to start with a pretty uh, low grit, probably like a 60 grit, something very, very coarse, um, just to get a lot of those machining marks off. We'll go to a 80 grit, 100 grit, 120 grit, and then somewhere between 150 and 180. We won't go past that because we don't want to go past like 150 grit really when using a Rubio Monocoat, otherwise it won't soak into the wood, um, which is our hard wax finish. And I will talk about that when I get to that stage of the video. This guy, pretty simple. 
Uh, all that really needs sanded off here is just the burn marks from the, uh, the laser itself. So we can probably start with 120 grit, go to 180 grit, and then just finish that with a food grade oil. So watch me as I do this. I don't really want to do this because like, let's be honest, sanding sucks. But watch me as I do this, let's get started. Alright, so we're at the fun part of every single wood project, and that is the finishing stage. Um, in the case of this charcuterie board, it's going to be super simple. We're going to use some Total Boat Wood Honey, which is a natural wax oil-based product, food safe. Uh, put it on the board, let it sit for 20 minutes and wipe it off. For this, this is going to be a piece of furniture, so we need something a little bit more uh, durable, something that's going to harden. Uh, I have a whole video on finishing and finishes on our Crafted Elements channel, um, but just know that if you're using, if you're making live edge pieces or hardwood pieces or resin wood pieces like this, there's almost nothing that beats Rubio Monocoat. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it is a good product. It's a hard wax finish. So basically you have the wax, the hardener. Once you mix it, you apply it, you wipe it off, and over the course of 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, it literally hardens to a shell and it looks amazing. It's super easy to put on and I'm gonna, <laughs> don't judge me, but it smells awesome. Like when I open this stuff, I wanna eat it. Don't eat it though, okay? Um, anyway, it is, how, what's, what's the ratio on this guy? It is a three to one ratio. So for three parts of this, you want one part of this, so four parts total. So whatever, whatever um, you're using, divide by four, and that's how many parts you're gonna have to come up with. Just know that this stuff goes a ridiculously long way. To finish this top, I will need this much product, no, no doubt. So we're just gonna have to be, and it's very expensive, like crazy expensive. Not that it's not worth it, but it's very expensive. So again, the fact that it goes a long way is really important. I'm gonna stop blabbing, I'm gonna start mixing. So I've mixed up 10 mil of hardener, 30 mil of the, the main wax component, and honestly, this is too much. This much material, I'm gonna probably waste half of it uh, doing this tabletop. And unfortunately, you can't put it back in the, uh, in the container. But anyway, you get the point, it goes a long way. So once you get this nice and well mixed, you can apply it with, uh, I use like a, uh, like a plastic trowel just to get it in there, and I'll show you that in a second. So really quick, just before we get to the actual tabletop, I'm going to go ahead and do our security board, our cutting board, our cheese board, whatever the heck you want to call it. And this as well is going to be really, really easy. Get your total but wood honey. Throw some on. Work it in with your hand. Obviously I've got a vinyl glove on. And you can see what happens as soon as that hits the wood and resin, it just looks mint, right? So I'm gonna let this set um, and just sit on my table here for 20 minutes, maybe up to a half an hour. Once that's done, I can come and like buff all the extra uh, oil off because basically nothing else is gonna be getting absorbed into the wood. You don't wanna let the oil sit for hours or overnight. It'll get kind of crispy and, and chunky and start to peel off. You don't want that. You definitely have to wipe this stuff off. This stuff's really easy to put on. You got a plastic squeegee scraper. This is like a Bondo scraper. You can get them at any kind of um, hardware store or even like an automotive store. Um, it's flexible, so you can kind of drag things across and get a nice surface. And we're really just gonna apply it liberally on here. And then to do the sides, I usually just use my hand. I don't know what other people do, but I use my hand and uh, make sure that we get full coverage here. And you can see that it's not like, it's not like that natural oil. It's not like water. It doesn't just absorb right away. 
you get a lot of it kind of on the surface here, which is why it goes a long way. This stuff originally, I mean, a lot of people use it for furniture, but its main intent is actually uh, floor finishing. So like, if you think about the amount of this stuff you would need to, to do an entire floor of a house, um, that kind of indicates how, how far this goes, right? You can see that I've got quite a bit of excess material on here, but that's fine because once we're ready to buff it off, all that extra stuff will come right off and you don't have to worry about it. This is kind of a no-nonsense, really easy way to finish a piece of wood and finish wood furniture because you can't really mess it up. You smooth it out, make sure you get good coverage, you come back and you buff it off. You don't really see any paint marks or striations or things like that, which makes this product that much easier to use. All right, we'll let that sit for a while and we'll come back and buff it off. Okay, so roughly 20 minutes has passed and you can see that this stuff is really starting to uh, get fully absorbed into this wood. I don't wanna let it sit any longer because I don't wanna have to really work at it. If you let it sit too long, it, it basically hardens um, and starts to uh, actually cure on here and then it becomes a real pain in the butt to get off. So. Just going with the grain, you can wipe it off and then you can start buffing in like a circular pattern. If you've got a power buffer or a handheld sander with a buffing pad, that will also work as well. You'll want to wait 24 to 48 hours before you actually start handling this regularly, uh, or if you put anything on it, like you know plates or whatever, uh, definitely wait that 48 hour mark. Um, so we can come back tomorrow and bring this up to the cottage, put it on the uh, dog cage, and that will be a completed project. As for this guy over here, pretty simple. I'm just gonna grab some shop towels, which is what I usually use for this, this application here, uh, because I can just discard them after and not have to wash them. I'm just going to rub all the excess total boat wood honey off of this and voila, we have our finished board. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button and please hit subscribe. We've always got project videos on the go, whether it's into woodworking, 3D printing, using a laser cutter, whatever we have here in the shop that we can make that's cool is going to be featured on this channel. So again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, if you have any questions about the vector to, or rather the Google Maps to vector conversion or resin or whatever, make sure you comment below and I will do my best to answer you. Thank you for watching and keep making epic things.